warm welcome to all our lovely participants for this evening's heritage hour it's it's evening in in goa india but for for all of you from around the world maybe it's sometime in the morning or later in the evening so warm welcome to all of you on behalf of the managing committee of the museum of christian art and all of us at the moka team we welcome you to this uh, this month's heritage hour which we are doing with a very special friend of ours professor walter rossa hi hi <laughs> Good afternoon, Professor Walter Rosa, and thank you for for agreeing to be with us this afternoon to share uh, what you have researched and studied so much about the Convent of Santa Monica over the years. So I would just love to introduce Professor Walter Rosa to all our participants. Walter Rosa is a professor at the Department of Architecture and researcher at the Center of, for the History of Society and Culture of the University of Coimbra. At the University of Coimbra, he also holds the UNESCO Chair in Intercultural Dialogue in Heritages of Pro Portuguese Influence and co-coordinates the Homenius PhD program. He also co-holds the Cunha Rivara Chair at Goa University. He has published widely on the history of architecture, urbanism, and heritage of former Portuguese colonies. South Asia is one of his preferred research regions. Mm -hmm. He has also contributed with an essay, Santa Monica Convent, The Building, to MOCA's latest publication, 100 Iconic Art Objects from the Museum of Christian Art. So warm welcome, Professor, to you, and we can begin the presentation. Just a moment, and um, well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, for me in Portugal, is good morning, <laughs> and uh, greetings to everyone. Uh, and thanks to, for you to to having me, especially to Natasha and uh, the tireless Natasha from Moca, and um, and the, the invitation you you made to me. I. I I, I, as, as Natasha just said, that the, the main reason to, to the invitation came from the, the fact that I, I wrote a small, small text in the, the well, the cattle, the book, the, about 100 iconic art objects from the Museum of Christian Art uh, that have been released um, now, uh, well, uh, one or two months ago. And um, I've been, been invited to, to, to uh, write a small text, a short text about the building of Santa Monica. This invitation came also from Maria Fernanda Matias from the Bobica Foundation that uh, has a special role on the, the, the renewal of the internet. So I, I decided not to repeat the text and uh, because, well, the text is available on the book, is also available on the internet. And, uh, well, the, the text is somehow a synthesis of what, about, about what is known on the history of the convent. I, I should say that uh, regarding the building and also some, some convent features, uh, they are well known. There, there are a lot of material uh, about the museum and uh, especially um, somehow a chronic uh, uh, first a, a direct speech from uh, uh, Santa Maria that has a, a special role on on the building and uh, establishment on, on the of the convent uh, uh, and so I, I decided not to, not to repeat it but uh, and and go to uh, direct this my this presentation to another part. I, I, I do some kind of history of, of architecture and urbanism, mainly uh, urbanism, but I, I, I'm also dedicated to uh, cultural heritage issues. And so as we, I have a small text on Santa Monica uh, architecture. I, I decided to today to, to address the issue of uh, heritage and somehow the heritage context of Santa Monica 
that is something that concerns me uh, quite a lot in, in, in this moment and regarding also all Goa. So, but I, I think it, it is relevant to, to remember a few uh, things, a, a few features about, uh, about Santa Monica, uh, starting by, uh, well, some, some institution at, at the institutional level, so as you all know, it's, uh, it's uh, the only non-convent uh, in the East, uh, Portuguese uh, influence Portuguese from the Portuguese part of India in the East. So it's a special convent because it's, it's the only, it's a, a huge convent, uh, regarding the number of nuns and also the uh, cost of servants. It has the limit of 100 nuns. Uh, but not in the limit uh, on of, of the servants. So see, there is only one convent, uh, nuns convent in Portugal we, we, that surpasses these these size of one hundred nuns in all Portuguese uh, nuns convent history. Um, it's also known that is due to that it is also very rich the endowments that the nuns along the, 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 center, the centuries bring to the to the government it, it made it uh, rich that brings in, in, uh, a lot of problems uh, uh, at the beginning and during the, the first decades and um, also the that when he, he is created, there is a discussion because the initiative was first to, to establish a, a nuns convent. It was from the Franciscans and uh, well, some the Augustinians, and of course we have the the, the crucial role of relation is that is the, the associates and the government in those times. He is Augustinian and. Also, the idea that the Augustinians have a more uh, dedicated approach to uh, training and, and, and training attitudes and issues, and, and that is relevant still today at, at the conference. And the last, well, the last feature that I think is relevant in, regarding the institution itself is that all, all the, the conference it was established was created in what I call a counter cycle of the city of Rome. As you know, in the beginning of the 17th century, people start to flee away from, from Goa. And uh, amazingly, the, the, the institution or uh, the Catholic institution start to rebuild or, or establish uh, in, in Goa with large building. And somehow we have a, a, a capital city that is becoming uh, somehow abandoned by 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 the people due to, due to its well not very pleasant uh, conditions of life. But we have the, the capital, the, the institutions, so the religious institutions established there, and established with large buildings, large institutions, and and well, yeah, to stay to to stay a, a, a long time. And, and this is relevant to understand uh, today's uh, Goa, even if it's uh, everyday values, as I want to underline uh, after. Well, but we can also uh, talk, I can also talk about three or four relevant uh, architectural features. One is uh, the, the inside and outside, uh, inside versus outside structure. It's an announced coming, so the, the nuns cannot uh, have direct contact with, with the outside the life of the, of the common. That's why the, the nuns convent usually have what they call the, 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 the in in church and the, the inside church and the outside the church this explains the, the structure of the common and the part that today is the the museum uh, as you can see on on the plan on the right side you we have the church itself and down we have the the, the choirs so you have an upper uh, an upper level and, and down level, level and, and Ground level choir where the this is where the museum is established, 
and the inside part of the, the convent where today still uh, exists um, a nun's convent that is more a nun's school uh, uh, Bay institution that is uh, the inside and also still somehow close to, to public visit only in a special in a special occasion so this this is relevant because it establishes a very um, interesting difference between the, the, the nuns and the, the, the women's and the, the, the men's uh, uh, convents and, uh, and monasteries, but also um, relevant due to the, the fact that it has kept the, the, its use uh, and we'll see uh, somehow the, the fact that it, it was announced uh, a, a women's convent somehow uh, um, uh, protected him uh, from the liberals' uh, destructions and possession of buildings after the expulsion of the religious orders in 1834. But we'll see that better in a few, in a few slides. Well, uh, another uh, relevant feature is that, from my point of view, so we have here the on the left both the choirs, the upper level and the down level choirs, and photographs uh, taken from from the church. And uh, of course, we have uh, also, uh, and, and probably from the artistic, artistic point of view, uh, the relevant. Uh, uh, feature of the wall paintings and frescoes that the nuns and not only the nuns uh, have made along all the continents. So we start having more and more uh, discovering more and more frescoes and, and, and paintings inside inside the convent, as you all know. Also, the scrapitos uh, that are uh, very very interesting in the in the in the convent. And a specific, uh, very, very, I can say, uh, emblematic features that the convent has that are the three uh, buttresses that support the facade of the church. And the, this, this happens uh, because uh, the, 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 the vault has fallen down in the 18th century. And uh, well, they were reconstructed in, in wood, not in stone, as it was before from the beginning. But they 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 support the facade with the, these brass uh, buttresses. Of course, the, the, the facade in those times has been rebuilt also. But this this special, but well, not very uh, beautiful, but interesting. And somehow uh, a mark uh, that that this comment has, and, but the the, the comment has problems of building problems uh, because also in the cloister we have as we, we see in this photo we also have buttresses. So so somehow this the comment has been built with a fragile structure, and um, and 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 that that becomes becomes the. Uh, an expression, uh, an architectonic uh, negative expression, but a uh, curious expression of, of the girl. So uh, I used to say that the, the, that Monica's is uh, artistic, uh, artistically very, very relevant to the, 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 to the, the well, the painting, the sculpture, also the the, um, the the museum that now we have there. But not so much in architectural or building terms, but it, 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 of course it, it's an interesting building. So, and, and I think it's here we have again the, well, the, the images you all know, and the the main milestones regarding the problem regarding the, the building uh, construct, construction and so the, the beginning of the construction. The first stone that had been laid in 1606. Of course, the the, the construction it itself starts only in 1611, and so the church has been consecrated in 1627 and 1834. We have the the religious orders cancellation in the Portuguese um, war in those times due to the liberal revolution, 
the vault falls down in 1849. So we see in the photo of the, of the chancel's vault in stone and the wood vault, not vault, but the wood the cover that has been built after the vault falls down. And 1885, the last last nuns disease. This is relevant. I referred it before, before because as it was a nuns convent, the when we have the orders uh, cancellation, the, the the law says that due to the difficulty that the nuns will will have if they come to to the secular life, the nuns convent they could not admit any new uh, nun, but the the convent still function till the death of the last uh, nun. So this avoid, as in, in Monica's, that, that somehow the, the, the liberals and all the revolution and well, a lot of things that happened in those times in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Portuguese world convents have been uh, invaded uh, Monica's, uh, so this uh, avoid that that Monica's has been invaded in 1834 and somehow keeps the convent uh, again, as we can see, even when uh, the vault, vaults fall down, they 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 promote the rebuilding. So the nuns promote the rebuilding because they keep the wealth they had before. And they did allow the conservation of the building almost till the, the, the end of the 19th century. And, and I think it is relevant to, to be aware of. And of course, in, we have an interruption of eight years interruptions where, during which the, 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 the fathers from the, from the diocese occupy the building and live in the building. But in 1964, after the, you know, on the, Aftermath of the, the, the Vatican the Second uh, Concilium, we have we have the institution of Mater Dei Institute that still in the building, and in 2001 2002 uh, the Museum of Christian Art was reinstalled, coming from Rochelle, was reinstalled in the church, so and the upper and lower choirs of the of the building. So. I think these are the the main uh, features that I, I I think it is relevant to underline regarding the the the, the building itself. Of course, I cannot uh, let to make the reference that uh, the, the museum of Christian art has just been uh, furnished, uh, reorganized. And is today uh, very uh, updated. It's a, a, a museum that I think in, in southern India we, we, we won't find anyone uh, so at such an international uh, standards museum level as we have as we have here. And that leads me to the uh, second part and the, to the main issue of my of my. And my talk that is uh, the area, cultural heritage values and that we have been present in Goa. And I think we have uh, very well represented in the museum. And the first, the first question is why isn't the Monica's museum, uh, so the Museum of Christian Art, uh, uh, recognize it. And uh, if you go to the internet, you, we find and we, we Google uh, asking what to visit in, in Goa, old Goa. It's amazing that we see these are two lists that in, including the Lox World Museum, but does not include the Museum of Christian Art. That is, from my point of view, uh, uh, one of the most interesting and most uh, international level museums that we have in South India. So this this brings us to question and, and to wonder, uh, I don't have the answers, but uh, what, why this, how can I say, uh, messy idea about the uh, heritage values that we have uh, in presence in Old Goa. 
And uh, I returned to 1986. This is uh, Old Goa, is, is, uh, so not Old Goa, but the churches and convents of, of, of Goa have been inscribed in, in World Heritage List. This is the beginnings of the, so 10 years after the, the, the first uh, uh, goods have, have been inscribed in, in World Heritage List. And I, I I want to underline because most of times we, we forget that it's not the city of Old Goa that doesn't exist anymore that has been inscribed, but the churches and convents of Goa, the, the the goods, the 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 the, the, the specific things that have been listed are, are the churches and convents of Goa, and. Well, there is a precinct that has been uh, delimited, as we can see here. Even the the the, the, the a part of the old walls that have been destroyed and is still being uh, dismounted today. And as we see, this is the precinct uh, itself of the, that, that has been enlisted into the wall wall uh, heritage uh, list. And uh, well. This is the large context today we have there that we have there today. So I have an arrow uh, just uh, locating the, the uh, Monicas. And well, this drawing we have the walls and we have the, the, the large area of uh, old, old uh, Goa. And uh, of course, we have the, the center where we have here in, in, in red. The um, what is the the religious uh, of the, the religious buildings, and um, well, the structure, the urban structure we have today has nothing to do with the old Goa structure. Even all the, the that terrace that we have in the center uh, has been built in the, after the 1960s. You can again to that. And, and so the, the heritage the, and, and the Monica's uh, have a special role there because we have a lot of ruins and uh, only a few buildings that still be uh, in, in, in the most relevant part of them uh, as they are uh, as they have been built. And Monica's is one of them. Of them. The other is, of course, uh, Bon Jesus. The other is uh, the, the, the Franciscans, uh, Franciscans Convent. Even the um, the Catens is not as uh, it was before on the on the convent part. Not the, I'm not referring to the church, but so Monica is some Monica is somehow uh, an exception uh, and something that has been. Kit uh, from uh, as it was uh, built in, in the beginning. Of course, we a few changes, but not not so well enough that that have erased the, the, its main characteristics. So this is what is uh, old Goa today, and uh, it's a, a set of uh, uh, remains of religions, religious buildings, convents, churches. And of course, uh, a dynamic that today, and, and this this uh, photo has been uh, taken uh, in Google before when they are starting the, the, to build the highway that passes uh, 100 meters from 150 meters from Bon Jesus, and uh, um, and here we have the list of things that, uh, as I said before, have been built in a uh, counter cycle. Uh, and as we can see, well, in one and a half century, everything has been built when people have these, uh, was uh, uh, leaving the, the city, even the uh, civil in the military institutions. And uh, well, Santa Monica has been uh, starting more or less in the middle uh, in, in the middle of this time gap. Uh, these are uh, some. Uh, three, uh, two of three, we will see the, the next, the, the, the third one uh, after. Two of the three plans that uh, have been made in the uh, late 18th century when Matit Pombal uh, uh, tried to rebuild and, and, and recover the city 
because he, 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 he says that all things all things that happened to old Goa were due to the Jesuit, so he is against the Jesuit, he spells the Jesuit. But here we see we must uh, forget the, the squares and the, uh, because the, that's the planning part. What what really matters here is of the wet wet uh, shapes shapes that give us what exists in Goa in, in these times in 70, 70 something, and we see that uh, what what exists are almost only the religious buildings. And uh, you can see uh, Monica's uh, here. I don't see, I don't know if you see the arrow. And uh, well, we have also the other plans. So this is interesting because uh, he, came, he made the plan and showing that what we have is a coconut forest. And uh, what, what Maki wants to, to urbanize was, was, was a, a, palm, a, palm, a palm forest. And um, so, and we can see now the details of the part that regarding the Monica's uh, complex. So we have the, the, here the Agustinians, and uh, in this plan, even they, they, the proposal was to destroy the, the, the convent, the, the Monica's, to give a place to a huge square between the, the, the Agustinians convent. And all the facilities of the arsenal and uh, the dockyards and the uh, uh, rape uh, factory and all, and all that. Of course, indeed, but these ones allow us to see how, how it was Monica's um, uh, insert, how it was in, in settled in, in the city and the relation with buildings around. Uh, some of them in ruins, some of them disappear, uh, as you know. Well, and this is today's uh, Monica's presence, and we see the ruins of of the, the Agustinians and the other uh, complex uh, that we have here, uh, even some rooms of yours, and uh, uh, old monarchy. So this this environment, uh, one of the things I, I I'm trying to underline is how the, the old Goa uh, has been has been shifted from a city to a um, spiritual uh, place. So it, it has been firstly there is something there uh, during. Uh, the vision, vision as a rule. Then you have the conquest by the Muslims of Mahaparam, and, and then when they split the, the, the Bijapur small sultanate. And, and so this is between uh, 1469 and 1510 when the Portuguese arrived out here in conquer. So we, the, the, the down, the, the down uh, image is precisely uh, an attempt to, rep to, to represent the conquest of, of Goa in, in uh, 1510. So this is a representation, uh, of course, made in Europe uh, from storytelling, but give us uh, the idea of the small town that exists there. And even Don John Castro in 1540 represents uh, a small town. So probably we have here um, a set of uh, Hindu temples then uh, that have been raised and substituted by Muslims uh, in the mosques. And uh, when the Portuguese uh, arrived, of course, they, they substitute the Muslim and the few Hindu temples that exist by, by churches. So uh, we have many layers of religious presence in this space. And uh, that was that that was what lost uh, because the 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 urbanity the, the of the Portuguese uh, capital of the state of Bahia has vanished quite a long time ago, and um, and I think this is relevant to to understand what are the real cultural heritage values we have here. Of course, what we have to get today is only uh, Catholic, but we have the other layers underneath. And uh, one thing that I, I, I learned in India 
uh, when I start going, is that uh, the, the respect that people from different uh, religions have for I have for the other the other religions. Okay. That's for me. I'm not a religious person, but it has been a lesson that I kept uh, during uh, the rest of uh, the rest of my, my life. It has been uh, relevant for, for for me. And of course, the the Saint Francis Xavier um, uh, grade. Uh, becomes relevant uh, to establish the, and, and stabilize the, the spiritual um, and religious uh, settlement place that we have there. And uh, of course, it contributes a lot to the heritage, uh, heritageization of, of God. Here we have uh, how fast uh, we have in six steps, the, uh, in nine decades, that, that bait uh, go uh, the, road, the the famous uh, wording that we say Rome of the East. So from diocese till the canonization of uh, Saint Francis Xavier. So we have ninety years. But after uh, we have uh, another relevant feature that in eighteen eighty six uh, it becomes the party grade of. Uh, East Indies. Uh, I don't know if anyone, uh, everyone knows that today in the Catholic Church uh, there exist only four patriarchates. So we have the patriarchate of Jerusalem, uh, Venice, Lisbon, and Goa. And so this makes Goa, in fact, for the Catholics, uh, one of the, uh, and of course, the, the, somehow a capital of the uh, Catholics uh, in, in the East. This is relevant and has been kept still today. And um, so uh, now, and very uh, briefly, I, I will give some, some of the milestones of the process of uh, Goa's heritageization. So uh, we have at the first level uh, the first exhibition of the uh, relics of the San Francisco Shader, and that leads to some to the repair of some buildings. So this is after the liberal revolution and after the cancellation of religious orders that has happened in 1834. So two decades after uh, people start to Become concerned what 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 happened to the, the uh, religious heritage and, and building heritage in Goa, and so we, we we start having. Of course, we have more, but I just put here in small bits some 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 steps to that. And uh, well, the discovering of uh, a post Alkirk uh, sarcophagus in in the Nossa Senhora da Serra. Uh, in 1895, uh, the creation of uh, uh, the Permanent Commission of Archaeology and the, the creation of the Royal Museum of Portuguese, uh, so that, that, that becomes the, well, somehow today the archaeological museum. And um, so we have, we start having a concern with heritage that is happening uh, everywhere in the world. And in Goa, uh, but always somehow around the uh, the, the the figure of Saint Francis Xavier. And um, when we had the exhibitions of the body and uh, all the pilgrimages uh, uh, to the to, to that, we have initiative of rebuildings and recovering and restoration of buildings. And uh, in 1930s. We have the, the beginnings of the inventory and list, the listing of Goa's cultural heritage. And uh, the, the, the missions, uh, scientific missions uh, from the uh, Portuguese Chad uh, Novo rule, uh, overseas research agents, also arrived to Goa and arrived to Goa with an historian of art, not only regarding agriculture and other scientific issues, but also history of art. Marita Varshiko in 1951. And so uh, then we, we have 
the, the, the direct intervention from the Portuguese uh, monuments uh, institution, the, the Direção Geral dos Edifícios e Monumentos Nacionais, that sent one of his more relevant architects to make some works. And of course, we, we still we have the post centenary of St. Francis Xavier. So again, St. Francis Xavier becoming uh, the myth and the figure of St. Francis Xavier being somehow uh, the, 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 the power, the energy, the, the, the fuel of this uh, heritization process of Goa. And in the 1960s, and we are arriving to the, the end of the Portuguese rule, um, we have the launch of the plan for the reintegration of the city of Vega Goa in its historical, archaeological, monastic and religious setting. This is a committee that is presided by uh, José Antonio Gineldes. And this is relevant because uh, beyond all these uh, steps, we have uh, Goans, not uh, Portuguese or uh, people from the Portuguese administration that, of course, support and send the architects and, 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 and give some uh, expertise and some, some and also some funding. But this is also somehow the the race of uh, a Goan identity and, and it, it, it's, it's go uh, side by side uh, during this process. And it's relevant that these communities have been formed by Goan and, and, and presided by, by one, uh, one Goan that identified, but of course have uh, any, uh, many other Goan personalities, but that's another discussion. I, I think it's relevant when that the plan that we see here um that comes out from the, from that commission and have been made somehow it traces what is today uh the the, the, the roads and the streets and the explanade and somehow uh reurbanize the place um uh, almost erasing the the urban network of old goa 16th and 17th century establish a new new roads and streets uh, network so it, it has been reurbanized serving the uh, religious buildings that last but also some of its ruins and special places and, and somehow the, the the shape we have the urban shape we have today comes from this plan because indian authorities after the 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 invasion, the independence, or whatever uh, that happens in 1961, they continue and they build, continue to, to, to execute the plan that the, the, the Goan Portuguese have made uh, in the in the 19th century, in the in the 1960s. And I I, I don't resist to put here uh, the the sentence that the Portuguese governor wrote. About the plan and the idea they have, so that I think we share with the, the, the commission and all that, uh, all that people that this idea that to revive, to revive the city, reborn, transform it into a monastic city, spiritual city, silence, but with life, in homage and respect to the glorious heritage that we should be proud of. As you know. Uh, uh, silence is something that today we, we don't have in Goa, in North Goa. And, uh, but I, I think it's, for me, it's remarkable that this uh, movement of uh, uh, mark and uh, recognize the, the uh, old Goa as uh, war, uh, as an heritage, specific heritage, a special heritage place. Uh, in India, uh, leads uh, is continued from the Portuguese rule to the when uh, Goa integrates the Republic of India in 1961, and that uh, have been Indian authorities, of course, with uh, full uh, uh, lobby from the Goans that uh, ask uh, and apply for the, the inscription on the World Heritage List. What happened in 1986? 
And somehow here we have what you all know better than me. Then that is well the the, the context of Monica's inside uh, in Goa, and uh, in a, well it, it's a, it's a it's a new uh, it's a different uh, place in Central that, that from the old Goa capital the Portuguese capital in the east or capital of Sardinia. So what we have there is a new reality, and uh, well. It, that needs to be uh, questioned, discussed, and uh, rethink uh, in cycle because uh, things are happening uh, in uh, today. Everything changes, uh, is always changing. I think, and I think it's relevant that we have this kind of discussion. So, uh, to finish my my presentation. I would like to just to, to share with you some something that uh, arrived to my mind when I thought about uh, the Monica's building and the Museum of Christian Art and the Mater Dei Institute and and the building itself about uh, what heritage lessons I can I can take from from it. Uh, facing it with the, with the rea reality of all Goa uh, heritage uh, today. So one of one of the, is that I need to have uh, the, the the continued use is the best way of uh, conservate uh, a building, even inventing or, or creating new uses. as is the the, the museum uh, that we have uh, there. And uh, it's a teaching training institution. This is re remarkable because it, it keeps the idea that uh, the Augustinian institution has somehow, uh, I don't know uh, but if you all know, but uh, Santa Monica was the mother of uh, Santa, uh, Santa Agustinio. Uh, and somehow he's always, always related with the idea she she never made uh, a miracle. She became canonized be, only because she had been the mother of Santa Cristina and has teaching and training him uh, as one. He becomes one of the doctors of the church, uh, as you, you all know. So this uh, remarkable um, uh, teaching training institution uh, related with the sources with the, with the origins of the of the building. And of the common, this idea of uh, overall the spirituality that we feel when uh, we visit the building, we visit the museum, when well, we just stay in front of it under the the, the buttresses, and so all how all this is in accordance, strict accordance with the cultural heritage values recognized by by UNESCO. Uh, so the, the idea of um, the, 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 what is inscribed are the churches and convents of Goa, but also the spirituality and the diverse layers that we have there. So the idea of integral uh, cultural uh, uh, dialogue that is implicit on what I just said, and uh, how these, uh, of course, I, 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 I know that today, uh, heritage. We have uh, uh, conflicts uh, in, in heritage issues, but um, the, 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 the target, so the aim of the world heritage was precisely to uh, build, to, to peace building, to, to use it as uh, in peace building processes. And so, uh, how we must look at the values, heritage values that we have in, in, in Goa and uh, through how uh, Monica's uh, regarding this point. And of course, the rest of lessons, I will let it for you and probably we can have some discussion. And that's all by now. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Rosa. And uh, it was a very uh, interesting and enlightening presentation for many of us. And I will request our participants, if you have any questions, to put them in the chat box. Or then, if you would 
like to ask the question personally to Professor Walter Rossa. You can raise your hand in the chat box and we'll, uh, we'll unmute you to ask the question. So please go ahead. So Marie Fernanda uh, Matias says, very, very enlightened exposure. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mary Fernanda. Anyone else has a question for Professor Rosa? Professor Rosa, what has been your uh, most uh, spiritual, if I may use the word spiritual, spiritual experience when you've come to, to Santa Monica? Or what has touched you the most or... Uh, you know, made it very special for you in uh, in the convent of Santa Monica when you have visited in the past? Well, the first time has been in 1994, <laughs> so a long time ago. And uh, we we don't have the museum there. And, yes, uh, we had it in Rashol in 1994. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's when I we opened in Rashol. I yes. visited them in Rashol. And uh, somehow, of course, uh, when, when we entered this building, we all have a, a, a spiritual uh, influence or contact due to the silence and the, the quietness that uh, we have in the building, and, and we, see, we still have. But also the, 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 the size, so not, not so much the size, but the scale. And I, I remember the, 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 how amazed I, I become with the with the buttresses, not the external one because those I know from photographs before, but the buttresses of the cloister and the, the that we have a that cluster with three three stories and another story. So there is a scale, a proportion in, in that cluster that somehow smashes me when when I when I came in. And so this this is always what what happened in architecture not religious it must not be religious but is uh, how uh, small we feel uh, uh, in, in facing other times and other uh, other uh, in, in features made by others in, in, in ancient times and the reasons and we start discussing why or why these people made the effort to have that and, mm -hmm. and it's always what, what, what I'm asking. Yes, that's, that's true. Uh, we are all uh, very surprised when we enter the convent for the first time because we don't expect it to be as large as it is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, not all of us uh, have the opportunity of visiting the space. Like you rightfully said, it's not open to the public, but... Uh, very uh, few of us have had the opportunity of looking at the building in, a, in appreciation of its architecture as well as uh, the art that lies within. So it's really something which, uh, which takes us by surprise. And also the, the same questions, how did they build at that scale in that time and uh, what was the use that they had for it but we we know from documents that they they used all the spaces and everything was well thought of so that's really nice we've had uh, comments from uh, dr rui villard as well to, the, to, to our 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 public yes <laughs> what was not, not only questions but you can just Yes, yeah, we have questions from uh, from Benita Badla who says, what was the religious order cancellation about and why? Well, that's a good question because uh, for us in Portugal, it's, it's easy to answer, every people know, but where it's not so common. So we have a, a revolution, a liberal revolution in the 1920s, 30s, and we have a civil war very, very destructive civil war, and uh, a lot of people die. So it's the most, uh, how can I say, violent, uh, violent episode of Portuguese history in, 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 here in, in, in Portugal. 
And uh, at the end, so it's a revolution between the absolutists and the liberals. And the, 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 the liberals have within some extremist relig religious extremists or, or against religion extremists. And, and the idea is that all the the problems that the port the, that the country and the empire has have uh, come from the, uh, uh, the, the the religion, the priests, the nuns, and all that. So, so in, in the idea that in 1934 they decide to make a new reform, canceling, closing, expulsing. You, you use the 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 term uh, expelling the, the the religious order. So they just close all the uh, so we, we, we keep the churches and the secular the, the secular branch of the of the of the of the canons and all that but uh, all the religious orders and all the goods from the religious orders have been integrated in the uh, state uh, heritage so the state uh, wealth so it's somehow an idea of nationalizing the, the, the wealth of the religious order. And so this has a, a, a tremendous heritage impact because mo most of the things have been, well, changed, sell, rob, uh, well, a lot, lot of, of goods uh, have been lost during this time. But it is also the time that we start having this kind of movements that we see in Goa. Uh, trying to enlist uh, make inventories and we have the first the first uh, museums came came out from 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 that moment so so it's a uh, well it's our revolution uh, our our french revolution <laughs> in portugal and uh, the the portuguese empire i don't know if that is clear for for who asked so benita, benita uh, had asked that question i think you you answered it and uh, we also have another question from Krizel, who asks, is there some way the murals within the convent could be made more accessible to the public, perhaps through periodic guided tours? Uh, if I can answer that question, uh, Krizel, because the uh, convent is still in use by the nuns and uh, it's not accessible all the time by the public, the Museum of Christian Art seeks permissions periodically in fact, not periodically, once a year to do a, a tour of the convent and we, we organize a, a guided tour uh, within the convent. So whenever the next one comes up, we will keep you all informed and you can opt to join the, the guided tour. It usually happens in the months of April or May uh, when the students go uh, go home for the vacation. So And the convent is then uh, not uh, disturbed of its routine that it otherwise has. Can I have made a suggestion? Because yes. I, that's what's happening in many, many places that could not be visited. Uh, we have mm -hmm. the prehistorical caves in Europe and all that, so it's uh, it cannot be visited. And then, well, uh, it, but it, Stone Age, the famous Stone Age, you cannot go down to Stone Age. So, but you have the interpretation centers. So perhaps if there is a small um space in the museum or next to the museum where we can have some reproduction of the, of the good reproduction and, and explain the paintings that could somehow is not the same but could help people to understand what, what happened as you know we don't have even a plan of the museum of the, of the, oh, of the conference I, I never had a plan of the, the convent a survey where and and a good plan of the convent with the, with the spots marking the places where we have the paintings and frescoes and, and reproduction it could be like it's not too expensive and probably will be, will increase the value and the the knowledge of people about on that without perturb, without uh, uh, intruding the, the life of the, the, of the of the building and what happened inside so this is just a, a proposal. It, it's it's a very very good suggestion, and it is something that uh, can be done. Definitely, uh, an interpretation center, which of course doesn't allow you access to the the rest of the building, but you at least get to see um, through photographs and maybe a sort of a virtual 
tour of the space or some spaces within the, the building of what the artistic uh, frescoes and murals are within the space. Yes, it, it's a very good suggestion, uh, Professor Rosa, and thank you for that. Uh, Snehal also had a similar question, so you have an answer, Snehal. Uh, Keith Alvarez, uh, Holy Hill had a lot more structures in the area. How well documented are these structures? Hmm. Well, I think they are not. It depends. Uh, it depends. The 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 Agustinian so Grassa is very well do documented, and uh, we have uh, archaeological surveys uh, surveys. I think uh, every year <laughs> from from a lot of time. And um, but the other the the, the other so the the, the Jesuit uh, college that. Uh, I think it is not even ruins we have. We don't have documentation. We don't know how it was before. Of course, there, there was my, my preferred building in, in, in Old Goa, that is Rosario, it is well documented and in good shape. So it depends on the buildings. And uh, of course, regarding the surveys of the 18th century, I show you. Uh, but I think Old Goa is a special place about which we we know a lot we, uh, we have a lot of sources and uh, there are people who wants to somehow to, to make a rebuilding model of old go and i think that that will increase the knowledge about about old go okay thank you so much for that answer is there anyone else uh snail you say if you can make it online yes we'll we'll get to that uh Hopefully, we start off with a project for the Interpretation Center. It's a, it's a suggestion right now, but it'll need a lot of work and uh, various uh, groups involved in in the in putting this all together. But definitely, when it happens, uh, it will be something which is available uh, in an online mode. Also, we we hope. Yes. Natasha, let me ask something. Some the, the the painting itself have been studied by specialists. We have yes. good texts about the paintings made by uh, paint, Portuguese painting specialists like Peter Serrao and others. Yes. So uh, there are studies on that. What we don't have is a good photo. <laughs> <laughs> How yes. not on that? It, it would made a very very nice book. I, I'm sure about that. <laughs> For sure, for sure. I think the the documentation is is uh, the photo documentation is is important. In fact, there has been a, a short film that has been made uh, based on a photo documentation done by uh, by Omkar Batka from Bombay, and um, he's put it into a sort of a film. We have not yet seen the film, but uh, we hope to screen it on the 31st of July. But what he's done is he's documented the the, the murals in Santa Monica, and uh, he's integrated it into a into a film. So that is yet to be seen and uh, viewed by us here in Goa. I think it was already screened in Bombay uh, recently. So we'll see, and from there, there is so much more that uh, potential to photo document and uh, have it in uh, online mode and do so much uh, towards an interpretation center. That's always uh, growth for what the museum can do for the future and uh, to, to educate and uh, throw light on so many aspects of the convent that we still don't know about. And using, of course, resources from uh, art historians like Professor Vitor Serrao, who has already documented and uh, done a lot of research on these paintings from the convent. Anyone else has any question? All right. So if the, okay, there's a question from Krizel, but I think it's Louis, Louis. The paper Walter Rosa mentions was very informative, particularly about the Goan indigenous contribution in terms of art, gilding, masonry, and carpentry. Uh, Professor Vito Serrao's uh, article that you are referring yeah, yeah. to, Luis. Yes, it is. It is very. Uh, it is very informative. True. Yes, because there are a lot of, um, as I said before. Uh, the building itself, even its uh, structural problems, uh, have somehow uh, 
give us an idea that who conceived the building. I, I, don't, I didn't share the idea that it has been uh, one of the architects, the military engineers that have been there. The book um, from Santa Maria talks clearly that he made the project and so he, he built it. And, and, and even the bad or worse quality of the structure and all that suggests that we don't have a military engineer building the, the, making the building. So the building is somehow a good structure that has uh, integrated a lot of art. And, and this is what is interesting. And, and all these um, paintings and uh, stone masons and people that, that work there, even the cabinet makers and uh, the talia and the tiles. And the, so it's, it's uh, somehow the building is not remarkable as a, an architectural uh, masterpiece but has a support, a canvas for a lot, a lot of very interesting art expressions that we have in the building. And, and that's why I, I, I think it's the right place to the uh, Christian Art Museum because it, it increased the value, organically increased the value. And so this is a way of uh, uh, extending the life of the building and its, its use and meaning, especially its meaning. That's, uh, that's very true. And uh, we are so glad that we have been able to, uh, we, are, we are here in this very historic building and adding value every day to this to this monument. And uh, along with the Institute Mata Day, the, the building stands and survives and uh, more researchers can come here and research about, about the building, about the, the artistic, uh, elements within the building and the Museum of Christian Art. So we are really, uh, we are really grateful that we are within this space. Anybody else? If not, uh, is there anything else, Professor Walter Rosa, that you would like to say? No, I, just want, I just want to, to, to thank the invitation, the opportunity, and um, saying that I'm, I'm always uh, interested in have the uh, contributions and, and discussions on that. So I'm, I'm, I'm available to everyone and, and thanks. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Walter Rosa for, for being part of this Heritage Hour this month and for uh, sharing with us your uh, knowledge on this historic building and also throwing light on old Goa and the spiritual experience of this place. Um, our next event for those who want to know a little more about the paintings within or want to see a little more of the paintings, it's through a documentary which I just uh, uh, spoke about, a poetic fresco by Omkar Bhatkar. He's documented these, uh, these murals from within the chapel in Santa Monica and um, he's integrated it into a sort of a documentary film. So you are most welcome, uh, those in Goa are most welcome to join us on 31st of July at 4 p.m. But kindly do register for this, uh, for this program. So thank you so much to all our participants and uh, uh, Professor Walter Rosa for this presentation. Thank you and continue uh, having a good weekend. Thank you all. See you. I will visit the museum in October. <laughs> Thank you and we look forward and the rest of you who have not yet visited the museum, uh, please uh, do come and visit because we've reopened uh, on the 23rd of May and uh, always welcoming all of you. Thanks and have a good weekend. Thank you.